Archaeologists are experts in their field, but sometimes they come across something that leaves them baffled. When they're not sure what they've found, they'll turn to scientists for help. But even with all their combined knowledge, there are still some ancient mysteries that remain unsolved. And those are the ones we're going to explore in this video. Let's take a deep dive into these mysteries and explore some of the theories and speculations surrounding them. In late 2022, a 52-foot papyrus scroll of the Book of the Dead was found inside the coffin of a man named Amos, who died around 300 BCE. This was the first complete ancient papyrus found in Egypt in 100 years. The Egyptian Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities announced the discovery a month ago in February 2023, but no photographs were released, leaving people wanting more. However, the ministry has now released the first photographs of the complete papyrus, which is in incredible condition, with clear and undamaged sections of text and illustrations. The unrolled scroll is now on display at the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. The Book of the Dead is a set of religious texts that guided the deceased into the underworld. It includes incantations, prayers, and a roadmap of the journey of the souls of the dead. The text is written in hieratic, a cursive form of hieroglyphics, with 113 chapters from the Book of the Dead written in 150 columns. A Moses name appears in the script 260 times, indicating that it was customized for him. It's clear that the book was written by accomplished professionals, as it has neat groupings and spaces for accompanying illustrations. Archaeologists have stumbled upon the very first surviving example of a set of defensive stakes comparable to the ones that Julius Caesar famously employed to defend his troops against the Gallic army in 52 BCE. The stakes were discovered in the former northern boundary of the Roman Empire, in the Badems region of Germany, by a team of students. While originally thought to be a smelting facility constructed during the early 2nd century CE, it was later discovered in 2016 that it was actually a double-ditched Roman camp that occupied a 20-acre area. In Bluskopf Hill's moist soil, Frederick Auth's team found the fascinating wooden spikes. A coin discovered on the site was dated to 43 CE, thus providing historical context. According to Tacitus, an ancient Roman historian, the Roman governor Curtius Rufus attempted to mine silver in this location in 47 CE, but found very little. The Romans set up camp to protect themselves against raids as they attempted to extract the raw material, according to archaeologists. The purpose of the forts, on the other hand, remains unclear, as they were never fully built and were burned down a few years after construction. Back in 1992, archaeologists found a long, smooth wooden object at the Roman fort of Vindolanda in England. Vindolanda has given up hundreds of interesting artifacts over the years, but archaeologists were stumped by this one. Or, at least, they pretended to be for the sake of decency. In 2023, they finally came clean. They've always known what it was, and it's now on display in a museum with an accurate description. Let's look at the facts. It's phallus shaped. One end of it has been carved in a way that resembles the male anatomy. It's seven inches long. While some historians still cling to the idea that it might be a pestle or a good luck charm, the fact that it's been worn smooth through repeated use pretty much confirms its status as a sex toy. We can't think of a worse possible place to get a splinter, but we guess it was a case of needs must for whoever owned it. Perhaps we should see the artifact as proof of the old adage that anything can be a sex toy if you're brave enough. The Amarna period, which lasted from around 1353 to 1336 BCE, is known for its distinctive art style that differed from the traditional Egyptian style of the time. The art from this period features elongated figures, sloping shoulders, and slender necks, with exaggerated facial features such as slanted eyes, protruding lips, and pointed chins. Queen Nefertiti, who was the wife of the pharaoh Akhenaten, is often depicted in this style, as she was an influential figure during the Amarna period. 
The limestone relief currently on display at the Ashmolean Museum in Oxford, UK, is a prime example of the Amarna art style. It shows Queen Nefertiti offering a bouquet to the Aten, the sun disk and god that Akhenaten worshipped during his reign. The elongated face, spindly limbs, and stylized features of the queen are clearly visible in the relief. It confirms that the style of art was used in official court and religious artwork during the Amarna period. The relief provides insight into the artistic and religious practices of the Amarna period, and is a testament to the lasting influence of Queen Nefertiti and her husband Akhenaten on Egyptian art and culture. A trainee metal detectorist in northern Germany stumbled upon a buried treasure of coins and jewelry in February 2023 and was delighted to find that their surprise discovery dates back 800 years. The hoard was found on the Jutland Peninsula of Schleswig-Holstein near Heithabel, a UNESCO World Heritage Site and a major trade hub during the Viking Age. Trainee Nicky Andreas Steinmann discovered the hoard during only his third outing with his instructor, who promptly called in state archaeologists to excavate the full hoard. The investigation uncovered around 30 silver coins, earrings, two gold-plated finger rings, one ring fragment, and two fibulae, with a pair of gold filigree pendant earrings featuring gemstones being the standout pieces. The coins date back to the reign of Danish King Valdemar II, with the deposit dated to the first half of the 13th century. The hoard was buried in a cloth bag that had been slightly disturbed by agricultural activity, although thankfully the contents remained undamaged. The site had long been abandoned by the time the hoard was buried, which likely made it a good place for someone to hide their valuables. You might never have given any thought to the question of how long the flushing toilet has been around for as an invention, but if you did, you'd probably think it's a relatively modern convenience. It isn't. You could have had the luxury of a flushing toilet if you lived in the right part of China 2,400 years ago, but probably only if you were the emperor or part of the emperor's court. In February 2023, archaeologists at the Yuyang Archaeological Site in the Shanxi province of China confirmed the discovery of the bottom half of a toilet that's fitted with a manual flush. Yiyang is known to have served as the capital city of many ancient Chinese dynasties, so it's fair to assume that the bottoms which once perched on this toilet were regal ones. Unfortunately, without the top half of the toilet, we can't say whether it was used by sitting on it or squatting over it. Given that we once thought the flushing toilet didn't exist until the 16th century, this is a remarkable find. The sort of flushing toilet you have in your home today is a 19th century invention. Archaeologists in Italy have found plenty of ancient Roman sarcophagi over the years, but discoveries like this next one are far rarer. It's a funerary stele dating back to the Roman imperial era, accompanied by a relief portrait of the person being buried. The rare artifact was found in Bucanico Abruzzo in February 2023 during roadworks. Curiously, there's no sign of a grave nearby. It's possible that the stele was moved from its original location in the distant past for reasons unknown. Helpfully, there's an inscription on the stele, which when translated reads, To Metia Rufa, freed woman of Caius. Metia, freed woman of Caius, places this for her mother. History records the existence of a Mattia family living in this part of Italy during the early imperial era. One of them, Marcus Matthias, was a legate of Julius Caesar in 58 BCE. Based on the inscription, this woman would have once been a slave owned by the family but later became free. In fact, the inscription suggests that both she and her daughter were former slaves. Rufa might have been a reference to her having red hair. Next up, we have what may very well be the oldest tavern, restaurant, or drinking establishment in the world. The discovery of this ancient Sumerian tavern in Lagash, Iraq, was confirmed in February 2023. Despite being approximately 4,700 years old, it still has food inside it. Back when the tavern was built, Lagash was an independent city-state with its own king. 
As such, it was one of the first urban centers in the ancient Near East. We can't confirm that this is the world's first tavern, but nor can we rule the idea out. Within its ruins, archaeologists have found 150 serving bowls, benches for diners to sit on, the bones of animals and fish, and even a primitive refrigeration system. There's also evidence that beer was brewed and drunk here, which is consistent with what we know about the Sumerians and their enthusiasm for beer. The evidence comes in the form of a cuneiform tablet, upon which a recipe for brewing beer is etched. Finding the tablet means that it's now possible to brew authentic Sumerian beer. We are sure there are some hipsters out there who'd love to try it. Objects buried in shallow earth are often found by civilizations or archaeologists who know where to look. But when something has been buried much more deeply, it often takes major construction works to bring them to the surface. That was the case with this collection of ancient Greek artifacts, discovered during the construction of a metro network below the streets of Thessaloniki in April 2019. The most astounding discoveries are ornate statues of Aphrodite, the famous ancient Greek goddess. But there are also rings, gold wreaths, and countless pieces of pottery. So many artifacts have been discovered that the Metro project had to be delayed while archaeologists came in to extract everything from the ground safely. Aside from the objects, researchers also discovered the Decumanus Maximus Stone Road that would have been the main street in the city during the 6th century and the remains of what may have been the city's first ever Christian church. Taken together, the artifacts demonstrate that Thessaloniki was once a powerful trading city and center of religion, and likely remained so for a thousand years before falling from prominence in the medieval era. As of the beginning of 2023, the total number of artifacts recovered is in excess of 300,000, and the project is still ongoing. Here's a discovery from January 2023. That month, archaeologists in Israel found the remains of a moat that dried up 1,000 years ago. And in the dry moat, they found a human handprint. The discovery was made during excavations of Sultan Suleiman Street in Old Jerusalem. It's a defensive moat and would have been a deep and large one back when it was in use. It's 30 feet wide and was carved directly into the rock. The purpose of the moat would have been to surround the old city walls, thus giving Old Jerusalem an additional level of protection from any potential invading army. The defenses were at least partially successful. Records indicate that it took the Crusaders five entire weeks to cross the moat when they attacked Jerusalem during the First Crusade in 1099. The handprint is strange because it's so deliberate. As we've already said, the moat was carved out of solid rock. Therefore, this has to be a carving of a handprint, rather than an indentation made by pressing a hand into mud or soft stone. Does it have a symbolic meaning? If so, what might it be? The Bjornstad ship, situated near Sarpsborg, Norway, is a remarkable petroglyph that provides a window into the pre-Viking age of Scandinavia. Carvings like this are few and far between, and each is precious in understanding the origins of the Vikings and the cultures of prehistoric Scandinavia. The petroglyph depicts a huge road longship, with two simpler smaller ships to the side, and is thought to be the largest rock carving in Northern Europe, measuring roughly 15 by 4 feet. Scholars agree that the carvings weren't made at the same time, with the two smaller simpler ships likely much older than the Bjornstad ship their depictions of small skin-covered boats that were used for hunting marine mammals during the early Bronze Age. In contrast, the majestic Bjornstad ship is likely younger, carved by the semi-sedentary farmers of the later Bronze Age. The ship depicted is virtually identical to the famous Hjortspring boat that was excavated in Denmark and dated to the Iron Age, and likely had seats for up to 40 rowers, making it a true warship of old. The sea played a central role in the Nordic Bronze Age society, and the refined longboat was an instrument of might, seafaring, warfare, trade, and exploration. To call the Yehoash inscription controversial would be an understatement. 
Even the provenance of the artifact is dubious, and there are conflicting reports about whether it was found on a construction site or within a Muslim cemetery close to the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. The text of the inscription describes repair work carried out on the temple by Yehoash, the son of King Azahiah of Judea, who ruled for a single year between 841 and 842 BCE. An account of these repairs appears in 2 Kings chapter 12 in the Hebrew Bible. The patina on the inscription can be reliably dated to this time, which suggests the inscription could be authentic, but the Israel Antiquities Authority regards it as a modern-day forgery etched into an ancient tablet. It doesn't help that the inscription is passed through the hands of the so-called biblical archaeologist Odid Golan, who's been proven to have been involved in the forgery of ancient artifacts more than once in the past. However, no amount of scientific testing has been able to prove that the Yehoash inscription is fake. Belief in its authenticity comes down to a question of faith. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!